The guest for this episode is Sanya Khan. Sanya is a senior digital executive with more than 10 years experience in developing and executing global digital strategy, delivering sustainable revenue growth in multinational within e-commerce, fintech, and telecommunication industries. She is currently the CEO of Utrust, the company shaping blockchain payments. Formerly, she had experienced at PayPal, eBay, Vodafone. She is a leadership coach, investor, and she is an amazing person. We really connected, not only talking about blockchain, talking about how Utrust is changing the world, but also instantaneous bounded when we are talking about our personal development. Experiences such as the firewalk at the Tony Robbins event. Without further ado, this is the Future Hour. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Today, another episode of the Future Hour, and we are super, super, super happy and glad to have、uh, Sonia Kang, and、uh, she is the CEO of Utrust, an amazing, amazing person. So, thank you so much for taking the time to do this、um, podcast. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yes, absolutely. So we're gonna jump right into it. And、uh, when I was doing the research,、um, I saw the interview that you did in December 2020, and you say that there is the increasing of the mistrust from the people towards the government, and when the government are failed to maintain a healthy economy, it is inevitably that people will go into research for other alternatives, which is, for example, currency and. It, At that time was the end of 2020, and then ever since then, now it's been close to a month. And you are exactly right, right? Because、um, this year, so many things have happened:、uh, the Colombian peso and the hyperinflation in Venezuela. And I look it up; the annual inflation rate there is 2,940 percent. And on the other hand, we have El Salvador starting their Bitcoin experiment. And maybe for people like us, we see it right away. But could you elaborate a little bit that connection there? For you know, maybe the younger generation or the people who are extremely curious. Yeah, sure.、Um, and thank you for doing your research on my interviews. <laughs> That's <Of course>. awesome. <laughs> yeah,、um, yeah very good. Yeah, I think you know if you look at the rate of the adoption per country of、um, cryptocurrency payments and cryptocurrency adoption in general,、um, we will likely see that those are the country that you are countries that you are referring to. So countries with either super high inflation or、right. where there is like a high distrust in the government. So countries like Argentina, Colombia, Turkey,、um, Brazil, etc. And in those countries already. People are finding an alternative of, you know, hedging their wealth and protecting themselves、um, towards an inflationary、uh, fiat currency, local currency,、um, and therefore the rate of adoption of cryptocurrency payments and, and usage is much higher.、Um, but I think what's happening now is even in, you know, countries in in Europe or countries、right. that are relatively healthy, let's say.、Um, The rate of adoption is is speeding up, and why? Because people are realizing that they can have another alternative. They can own their own money. They can be in control.、Um, they don't need to rely on a government or or a bank or intermediaries to be in control of their own wealth.、Um, and that's why I think you know the rate of of, of adoption is speeding up right now um, everywhere. Um, and of course, it's it's slower in countries like、uh, Europe and and maybe the US.、Um, Um, than than countries where where there is a high inflation,、um, but I think people more and more, and especially younger generations, are realizing that yes, I can have another alternative, and actually I can be in control.、Uh, I don't need to put my money in a bank who will lend it out, you know, to some somewhere else,、um, and not even give me、uh, the interest of the inflation. Um, and I think that's that's what's happening now, especially for you know Gen Z, millennials, and and younger generations. Yes, absolutely, I totally agree. And especially for the younger generation, Gen Z, like you mentioned, and millennials, they grow up using technology or computer. So maybe for them, it's way easier to accept that the currency. 
well, currencies are digital and uh, way more portable. And for, for, the, for them, it's totally fine maybe like now to use cash all the time or completely, you know, become a cashless. So that actually, uh, what you mentioned leads to my second question. So uh, would you tell us about what problem you and you trust are solving and why? Yeah, definitely. So awesome. you trust the simplest way I can describe it is we are the stripe of cryptocurrencies. So basically uh -huh. we allow anyone to accept cryptocurrency as a payment method right. from their buyers, from their customers, whether they have an e-commerce store uh, or whether they have any kind of business and they want to accept crypto as a payment method. And they can either decide to settle in their bank account in fiat currency, so euros, dollars, etc. Um, right. And that's like business as usual. Um, nothing happens in my back end, continue to settle in my fiat currency. However, I open up myself to this new segment of buyers who want to pay with crypto. Um, or I can settle in crypto as well um, and in stable coins and, you know, embrace this um, new technology um, in its full potential. And I think right. the biggest value we bring really to the merchant is one, being able to drastically decrease their payment processing fees, right. especially yes. nowadays, you know, if you want to yes. drive, you need to have an international business, you need to sell across borders. And that right. means that you will pay a lot in payment processing fees um, right. for, you know, international sales. And that can eat up into 10% of your revenue. And with Utrust, we cut those intermediaries with blockchain. Uh, so you only pay 1%. And that right. means, you know, you can save up to 90% in your payment processing fees. You eliminate chargebacks because we don't rely on a credit card infrastructure. So all the issue related to fraud of stolen credit cards, you know, buyers not recognizing uh, payments in their bank. We completely eliminate right. that cost, um, which accounts for more than 40 billion loss in revenue for e-commerce today. Um, right. And the biggest thing is really you open up your business for a new segment of buyers. And today there are more than 100 million users holding mm -hmm. cryptocurrencies Absolutely. who are ready to spend them. You increase your revenue um, because you're allowing new people to come and shop on your platform, spend cryptocurrencies, and you don't even need to know about blockchain technology. You can just, um, we are available through plugins. So if you have a Magento store, WooCommerce, you can just download it without having any knowledge of crypto and right. continue to settle in your bank account in regular yeah. fiat currency. Um, yes. So that's really the problem we solve. We bridge that gap between a new technology and traditional retail businesses, and we make it really easy and accessible for people. So therefore, we compare ourselves to, to Stripe, um, really yeah. easy user experience, easy to integrate. You can have it ready in five minutes. Yeah. And th I think that is really brilliant because uh, what Utrust is doing is being and is providing this value that also facilitate more transaction in the world of cryptocurrency as well. And of course, that um, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if a lot of people know that or not. It's like when people are buying things on the internet and putting their credit card information is and with a with a with a security code behind it, it's actually extremely, extremely just like not secure at all. And uh, something that we've been doing for such a long time does not mean that it is right. It does not mean that it is super secure. It does not mean that uh, we should be keep doing that for a very long time. And uh, I really think that when a better option is here that is inevitable that um, we should adopt that. It's just like how we change it from gold, carrying gold everywhere, you know, like, I don't know, a ship of gold yeah. from Spain to, I don't know, from somewhere and uh, to trade to, you know, the paper money. And now it's just, we have the technology, we have the internet, we have the blockchain, and now we can do way more efficient, 10x or maybe 100x of the efficiency and uh, maybe have a way lower fee. So I think that's just um, a great alternative and just getting towards the future, right? So um, yeah. yeah, definitely. Yes. And I think that's also the reason why, um, you know, for remittances, um, it's a very useful technology. And, you know, today, 
to send money from the US to, to Mexico on a $200 um, yeah. transaction, you can end up paying like $20 or more, which is yeah. ridiculous for, you know, someone yeah. sending money to their family. And with blockchain, yes. you can almost, you know, eliminate all the costs related to those transactions. And that's why it's a beautiful technology to, to embrace. Yes, and exactly the example that you used, uh, someone sending from uh, money to uh, back to their family, back to their home country. And the the bank or the middleman has been taking the cut, which is like, oh, I think they used to do that in the ports back in the days. Maybe let's like, say if you do, if you have to go through from point A to point B and then you have to stop at point C to the port and you have so much goods, and every single time you stop at the port, you have to give a percentage of your goods. And and now with the money, it's the same thing. And, you know, like every time you send money from a war, we sent money back in the days, we have to give a certain percentage away. And we've been doing that for a long time, but that does not mean that it's super fair. Anyway, rewind the time a little bit back when you are, which is also something I uh, super curious when I was doing the research. So um, you mentioned that in the interview before that you took a meeting with Nuno back in the days. And um, I think you two all, I think you flew out or he flew out and you two took that uh, amazing meeting. So during that meeting, what was that one thing that, that really stood out for you, made you decide this is something interesting. This is big. Uh, I'm super excited that I must join the team. Would you share that with us? Yeah, actually, it's like a beautiful story. Um, right. And I think, yeah, the entry point is very important because I think, um, you know, coming from a background of traditional payments and e-commerce, I worked in the corporate world for more than a decade before. Yeah. It's not easy to meet people just sending a message to someone on LinkedIn and like, oh, let's just meet and brainstorm. And yeah. while I was working at PayPal, I found out about Utrust. There was only the white paper at the time, okay. not even an okay. MVP. Okay. Um, and I just said, okay, let me send a message on LinkedIn to the founder, to Nuno, um, just okay. to understand what they're doing. Yeah. And immediately yeah. I was struck by his energy. And he was like, oh, we'll fly and, and meet you. Like, where are you? Um, and yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm in Milan. Wow. And we met for lunch. And... You know, the energy, his passion, um, I was really impressed by that, by the proactivity, the conversation. Right. So um, at the beginning, I was in the company um, ad advising them. And then right. I, I decided to join. Like the more I was working with the team, the more I was impressed by the vision, right. the energy and the potential to really disrupt an industry and to yeah. really create a positive change and a positive impact for business and businesses and for people. Um, right. But yeah, for me, the biggest thing was, wow, I'm really impressed by the vision of this person, by his commitment and energy, and I can really change the world uh, with this technology and this company can really do good. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think... Um, for, for, for me, because of my life experience, I've been moving, I've been always been moving from China to America and not to Europe. And, and I personally speaking, when every single time when I find like-minded people and I just appreciate them so much, it's almost like you are winning the lottery, uh, because when you find the people are equally passionate about, uh, what you also care about. And I think it just, um, uh, it's, um, it's almost like a gift and it's, it's graceful. And especially you all can work on something together then bring value to the world. So, yeah, yes. And I think, you know, until then I was kind of blind into embracing my full potential as an individual. Yeah, right. I think I grew up in an environment where um, the only option you had was to go in investment banking, in finance or, you know, in, in right. retail, in a large corporate and you need to scale that corporate ladder. Um, mm -hmm. which was great. And I learned a lot um, and, you know, I would do everything the same because I think, yeah. you know, it made me, made me who I am today. Um, yeah. but then at a certain point I realized, you know, what am I bringing to, to the world through society with this work that I'm doing in a corporate environment? Um, and my potential is higher than this and I right. can embrace a vision that it's much higher than that. Um, and that's right. my right as a human being. Um, and, you know, being exposed to people like Nuno really opened up a new world for me of really people who are pioneers and disruptors and entrepreneurs, right. and they have the yeah. courage to change the world. 
because it's not in the end like it's not easy to run a startup um it's not easy to create it it takes a lot of courage it takes a lot of yes. commitment and yes. you know so for me being in the corporate world was the easy solution you just you know work for someone you get paid um yeah. and this was really like okay what am i doing with my life uh, can i embrace something bigger even if it means you know risking a lot um and taking a bigger commitment. So for me, it was a life choice as well. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. So l- later on, I'm going to ask you one more question related with it. I'm going to go in a little bit more in depth with this. But I'm just curious, was it around the same time when you met Nuno that you also started getting super into self-development or where it was, were you always being into self-development? Um, I've always been into self-development okay. Uh, okay. since I yeah. was in my early 20s. Um, yes. And I started really small. Um, but I think probably in the last seven years, um, I right. got um, really into it. And I think probably it was around the time that I moved to London, um, where right. people are more open to self-development, to coaching. Um, prior to that, I was living in Italy. And I think, yeah, being in London made me more exposed um, to people into coaching, people into self-development. I started going, attending a lot of events. um, Absolutely. And yeah, that's when I discovered uh, Tony Robbins. I started being regular at his events. um, Yes. And yeah, that really as well opened up new opportunities for me, new possibilities. um, Meeting people from super different backgrounds, but... um, wanting to change them, themselves for the better uh, and growing Absolutely. themselves all the time. Um, and yeah, I've never stopped since. Yeah, <laughs> that's beautiful. That's, and personally, I, I could be wrong, but personally, I just feel that compared to, definitely compared to America, uh, in the Mediterranean here in Spain and Italy, um, even in China a bit as well. Like it's the coaching or self-development, it's just not as big as a, such a thing compared to, you know, in America or uh, like you mentioned in London. I, I, found, I found it curious. I found it curious. Um, yeah. yeah, it depends yeah. a lot on a culture of a nation, right? And I right. think in some yeah. countries, um, having a coach is like, oh, why should I have someone asking me what do I need to do? Like I can figure that on my own. I don't need to yeah. ask someone <laughs> yeah. to do that. Yeah. But it's, it's about the small things and like recognizing, yes, I'm paying someone to make me accountable on my goals and to help me. Right. It's not, it doesn't need to be something super big. It's like, it's starting from the small things and building up on those that really yeah. makes a difference. Yeah. 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 I think there's a quote saying that if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with other people or go with the team. Right. And, uh, and this is, I think, one of the biggest reasons that everyone should consider, you know, like um, a coach or somewhat of, of a consultant in a way, because everybody, no matter who it is, everybody has their own blind spots. And a coach is ideally someone that have this experience before uh, exactly what you want to achieve. And they can see your blind spot because they can see it from a totally different perspective. And and uh, to get into, to be to be super obsessed with our own product, I think also that is one of the blind spot for a lot of entrepreneurs. I think about, oh, my product is perfect, my service is perfect, and then actually there's always a lot more room to improve. But um, anyway, we've been talking about education oh. and uh, as education as the key of mass adoption. So would you tell us a little bit about how you trust is go about doing it? Um, yeah, yes. definitely. Um, I think we made a very big mistake at the beginning when okay. launching our MVP and our product. And okay. um, I really think it's important to to talk about it for other companies to to learn from our mistakes as well. Um, right. And I Absolutely. think the mistake that we made is just to assume that, you know, this product is amazing and everyone is going to adopt it. And in every vertical, everyone is going to use it. Right. Um, yeah. While we realize through time that, Yes, we have an amazing product, but it's not a product that everyone will necessarily use. So for us, it was about understanding like who is our ideal customer? What mm-hmm. are they needs? Like, why are they using this product? Can mm-hmm. we add additional features on top of that? Um, mm-hmm. So I think, you know, the mistake that we made is let's roll it out. Let's tell everyone, educate everyone um, around our product. Well, I think it's very important um, 
especially in a new industry like blockchain to really understand what is your right. ideal customer and why why you know why would they want to use our product what problem exactly. are we solving for them um, and then educate them about it um and yeah that's the shift that we had to make um mm -hmm. through time in order to really appeal for for the right people and right. for us it was about identifying where are the verticals where buyers want to buy with cryptocurrency and mm -hmm. then can we go after those merchants and educate them and give them you know case studies about what they can achieve with our product um so we operate in a market in a two-sided market basically because we have a b2b product yeah absolutely. For merchants, and then we have uh, a consumer product for buyers because we also have yes. our wallet and right. we go differently um you know with two different strategies and for us the merchant is the main customer because in in the end we are wallet agnostic we do have our own technology but we're not locking the customer to use only our wallet they can use any wallet they right. can use a competitor wallet um because we are all about you know being open to everyone and we want um, mass adoption and you cannot have mass adoption if you're locking the customer to use your technology um right. <laughs> so yeah for the merchant as well there are two let's say segments of customers um on one side you have merchants that are already super passionate about crypto they know everything um and for them they adopt us because of our reputation like that because, right yeah. you know we focus on compliance our user experience is is amazing our customer support is amazing um for other type of merchants, we need to work more on educating them towards, right. you know, why is this the right solution for you? Um, yeah. Why are you not incurring in any risks? Um, um, questions that they ask often is like, what about if there is volatility? Like if I get paid less and right. just explaining them that we remove all of these uh, risks for the merchants. Um, those type of merchants also are likely to settle in fiat. So it's about yeah. explaining to right. them, you don't need to have crypto knowledge, right? business as usual uh, yeah. and easy. Yeah. 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 Uh, really quick about that. That kind of merchants, you all settle them at, at the end, settle with them with fiat or, um, okay, okay. Yeah. So basically uh, for cool. those type of merchants, we convert crypto on the spot um, right. when the buyer pays and we settle the merchant in, in fiat. Um, and okay. we can settle uh, daily, weekly, or monthly, depending on the merchant okay, volume. Okay, okay. I see now. I see now, and and I see now. This is exactly the reason that when uh you are going to a different country, that's where the you know the regular regulatory things, the back and forth, and research and the due diligence were needs to go into. Ah, oh, I see. Uh, cool. And which actually pretty much related with the next question. Um. And also, with, when it comes to education, because I saw that you trust the YouTube uh, YouTube account is like very active, always posting videos, which I think that's brilliant. Uh, because short videos on YouTube is, um, I think, especially after the pandemic, has been such. I, I for I always been like watching YouTube podcasts and videos to learn. But also, I've seen so many other my friends that I wouldn't think they would use that much YouTube, but they've been using so much YouTube on learning things um, to. Uh, getting information and check out some interviews. So I think that's absolutely brilliant. So really with that, um, is you try thinking about doing a podcast or something like that as well? You know, since, uh, um, that's yeah. a great question, actually, because it's something in our in our marketing pipeline. We yeah. just hired a new CMO and nice. he's building his own internal team. So um, we have several open positions now. Um, some of them are in the marketing team. Uh, because yeah we want to do exactly what you said it's not only a podcast but we want to be more active on twitter on right. social media on right. channels like reddit or clubhouse yeah. new channels emerging absolutely. Um, absolutely where people looking after uh, crypto blockchain information are hanging out um, yes. and yeah we want to double down our growth on on marketing absolutely. and yeah. yeah as you know better yeah. than me doing a podcast um <laughs> takes a lot of time absolutely uh, because it needs to be prepared properly and you know, yes. the content and therefore we want to do it when we have um a larger team um yes. which is going to be soon so i yes. think towards the end Good. of the year we're going to be ready Good. 
Awesome, yeah. awesome. Yeah, because I saw that you're already doing that those AMA quite often, uh, regularly. Anyway, that might as well. And, and those could be uh, for me that I constantly think about how do I multi-purpose the content I'm doing. Let's say if I'm already doing an interview or uh, already writing an essay, how do I you know use that on quite a few different platform and like squeeze out the juice of the lemon as much as possible, if you will. Uh, and yeah. also <laughs> this question. Um, and I went on the website and the medium to check out the um, roadmap for Utrust. And also you mentioned in the interview before that for this year, and maybe I think it was like after summer or something, you're all going to plan it and maybe even execute a little bit more towards when it comes to the U.S. market. So mm -hmm. um, what's your plan for that and how's everything going? Yeah, yeah. we have... Um three major things we're working on on our pipeline. The first one is expansion in the U.S. market. Right. Um, I think, you know, with our current license in Estonia, we are well covered um, to roll out our solution almost globally. However, right. you know, the U.S. is um, a difficult market. You need to have right. um, either a license in each single it's state. Like U.S. they have their own bubble, like like exactly. they're like it's it's like you it's like a, it's not a bubble, it's not like a wall, but but like you still need to get do some stuff to get through in and yeah. out of the bubble, which is anyway. Yeah. So basically, yeah. for us, how we are approaching it is we are currently in discussion with multiple partners um, to understand who's the right partner um, that can help us expand. Um, in the U.S. territory and currently like 60% of the traffic on our website comes from the U.S. Right. Um, and we can accept payments originated from the U.S., but right. we cannot onboard merchants who are headquartered in the U.S. So basically right. we're saying no to a lot of people who want to use yes. our solution. Yes. So yeah, that's, that's the first thing we need to solve. Um, and then the team is working on rolling out a solution we announced um, already and that I think is going to be um, awesome and really a key differentiator in the market, which is, you know, shifting the perception of what a payment gateway can do for you from like um, a payment processor just wanting to, you know, take your money, uh, take your right. up to 10%. To right. someone actually helping you make money. So basically, how we're going to do it is we're going to allow merchants who want to be paid in crypto to leave their money with us and to generate mm -hmm. a yield on top of that. So, you know, they okay. can earn up to 10% um, in, in the money they have and, and they leave uh, on the Utrust platform. Um, right. And we can offset part of our fee uh, to put it in a pool for, for the merchant to continue earning money and building, you know, uh, with good yield yes. on top of that. Um, yeah. So that's the second thing. And the it's third... Real quick, is that the reverse staking or that's some, that something else? It's the reverse staking that. for merchants. We have it okay. for the buyers already. Okay. Uh, we're okay. going to roll it out for merchants. Um, right. For buyers, oh, cool. we already have it on, on the whole wallet. Um, yes. And yes. what I was saying, yeah, the third thing the third is thing. Uh, <laughs> we want to really double down the team. Um, so we're hiring for multiple positions um, at yeah. the moment. And I think, you know, for the vision that we have, for the role we want to play, uh, we need to have a larger team. Uh, right. So there are multiple positions open if anyone is interested. Uh, yes. They can go on Utrust careers and, and apply. Absolutely. And ideally, those people, you want them to be either be based in America or have um, definitely quite a bit um, be, uh, experience when it comes to um, blockchain experience in America, correct? So right now we are hiring still for our um, European, let's say, um, okay. division. Um, yes. It doesn't need to be that people are in Europe, so it can be flexible. Yes, um, yes. But, absolutely. But um, our headquarter is in Portugal. And yes. then once we roll out to the state, um, we will start also opening up um, branches and like finding people for, for the United States. Um, but yeah, currently... If people want to apply, we require them to be like on a similar time zone. Um, Absolutely. When they speak to the yes. team, at least like it's like a similar yeah. time and they can, they can, you know. Yeah. Speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. The, the communication and the information then so that is the back and forth, everything, the whole machine runs faster. And uh, yeah, interesting. Definitely. Uh, 
yeah, we're going to keep talking and definitely super excited to to follow up with the update, especially with the U.S. market because um, it's huge opportunities and there's so many, so many, many, many business owners that they are uh, extremely open-minded, that they are curious about the technology. So um, I'm... I'm, I feel like personally excited for for you all uh, with that, and um, and I had quite a few mentors I are extremely extremely connected in the uh, in the US when it comes to regulations and um, all different kind of things, and and we're definitely gonna be keep talking. So uh, thank you, that. that's great. Yes, yes, absolutely. So this is gonna be an interesting one. Um, <laughs> would you tell us a little bit about how did you and your team navigate during? You know, in the past, the bear market and the bull market, um, you know, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think for us, it was a combination of like COVID plus right. the market, plus everyone yes. working remotely. Yes. Um, and I think it's, it must know, be so, I think the crazy is like the kind of maybe the lazy word, but I, I can only imagine, right? Like the big yeah. company, so many users. Um, it's like so so much stake on the table, right? So um, super curious about that. Yeah, actually, I think you know we um, we've been doing great, and especially since COVID hit, because right. that required us to have a shift of, of mindset, and yes. we took COVID as an opportunity to really um, be closer to our customers and prospects, understand right. their needs, and during COVID, we roll out multiple new features. Um, like wow. voicing, like B2B, new verticals, because we understood mm -hmm. that actually customers, they want this. Um, oh, maybe they want to settle in crypto because like uh, they understand the value and, and for them it's it's better right. and they want to settle in stable coins. So for yeah. us, it, it was really an opportunity to understand what else can we do. Um, and I think for me, like the key for everyone to, to be in a crypto and, and, and blockchain company is to mm -hmm. separate yourself from the market. Like your company is your company. Uh, you need to have a long-term vision. You're building something for the future. Right. And, you know, anything happening in the market, um, you cannot allow it to touch you on a daily basis. Um, right. Of course, people are in a better mood when uh, the market is up. And because, you know, people yes. have a lot of their savings in, in crypto. And of course, they're going to be happier has an impact uh, but you cannot let it affect you um and you always need to have a long-term vision and you know why am i doing this what is my business standing for um and you know detach yourself from speculation and understand you right. know, does my business have fundamentals for the future and if yes, yes okay forget about the market because eventually yes. it's all gonna come uh out to you know the real yes. value um yes so yeah, it has its ups and downs, <laughs> uh, Always. <laughs> but I think it's, you know, it's just not letting it affect you so much. Right. And, and I personally thinking that, um, I came from a psychology background. Um, I studied business psychology and I think is whether it's the stock market or even back in Europe, back in the days here, they have tulip mania in the Netherlands, uh, whether it's stock market or tulip or whatever it is and now with crypto right people it's like kind of like the bad habits that human have um like what you mentioned speculations fear of missing out and when someone's saying that oh s well, even some news uh or real news or not uh, saying that something might happen and then a lot of people start panicking right so it's, uh, no matter what kind of technology we're using it's always inevitable that the human emotion is such a big factor and which is exactly to what you said right like always keep in mind that it's like we're in the market but also at the same time we're like kind of not so that you can have your mental clarity to still um, holding yourself and your team accountable to achieve and deliver the things that you promised to everybody. So I think that is um, super important for everybody. Um, <laughs> yes. It is. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, now we're about to shift, uh, you know, the, um, the conversation, the vibe a little bit uh, to get to know our dear Sonia a little bit better from the personal side. Uh, this is going to be such an interesting question and I super, super enjoy a lot, uh, asking this. So would you mind sharing a little bit with us what roles does love and affection plays um, in your life? 
Yeah. Oh, a nice question. I really like it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I think, you know, one thing that um, Tony always says, Tony Robbins, is like, right. whenever something great happens to you, what do you want to do first? Like, you want to share it with someone else, with people right. you love, you, with your partner, yes. with your friends, with your family. Yes. And I think, you know, love and affection in, in all its forms plays a fundamental role. And not only the love for my family, my partner, but like surrounding yourself with people that you trust and you feel comfortable and really you can share, you can amplify your emotion, you can share um, the right. good things and the bad things. Um, and I think, you know, um, for me, it's important to be surrounded not only with people that um, I love and love me and I feel safe with and, and I can share, but also with people who inspire me to to be better, um, to be a better person, to be a better leader, a better entrepreneur. Uh, so really surrounding myself with people that are going to challenge me as well. Um, yes. Just, just be a better person. But I think, you know, love is the fundamental of Absolutely. everything in life. You know, if you yeah. don't have love in your life, either, you know, from your friendships, from your family, um, I think you're, you're losing a lot. And it's yeah. just the baseline of life. Yeah. Yeah. I think also Tony says uh, at UPW, he mentioned, I hope I remember correctly, he's exactly cool. He was saying that love is ultimate cure um, of everything. So with that said, you mentioned you have a partner. Um, would you mind, uh, like I asked, like how long you two been together? Uh, yeah, he's my husband. Okay, so we got amazing. married um, last year uh, during COVID. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, was, wow. Yeah, which was nice because we ended up doing like a really small uh, ceremony which Aww. was super nice with just yeah. family um, and yeah. yeah we've been together four years we met actually when I was traveling to LA he was ah, living wow. in LA at the time I was living yeah. in London um, wow. and then after one year he moved to London oh, um, wow. and we worked from multiple countries we worked in the UK um, we cool. worked from Portugal last year uh, we are in yeah. Italy now yeah. Right. Wow. Beautiful. Uh, really quick. Like, where did you two met? Uh, where did you two meet in LA? Because I also used to live in Los Angeles as well. Yeah, we met through a common friend. So basically, okay. I was okay. supposed okay. to visit a friend of mine, and yes. yeah, last minute she had to travel somewhere else, and she gave me his number. Yes. Um, and oh. yeah, we met in West Hollywood. That's where oh. I was living at the time. Nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. I think it's so interesting how life works in such a mysterious ways that it could be like something it's like one thing led to another and then and then you meet somebody and then this one person totally changed your life so yes with that said do you have any tips or secrets to you know to maintain a healthy and um like passionate uh romantic relationship you know especially this our audience for you know maybe for younger generations um so <laughs> Yeah, great question. No one ever asked me that in a podcast. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> it's you. a really good question. I yes. think one mistake that people do is to assume that when you meet the right person, like, oh, now your life is complete and it's magical. And I think your life is complete anyway. And the yes. first person you need to date is yourself. And really, uh, and it's not about the self-love and like candles. Mm -hmm. It's nothing like that. It's yeah. really enjoying your own company, being a person that has passions and interests and has a fulfilled life. And only right. then, you know, you can invite in someone, you can attract someone who's going to want right. the same things and who's going to yes. come with the same energy. Because I think if you're coming from a place of lack and like, I need to meet a person because my life yes. is incomplete then probably you're going to attract not the right person because you're coming from a place of scarcity, of lack. Yes. If you're yes. coming from a place of abundance, you invite just more abundance into your life. So I think it's right. just keep working on your, on yourself and, you know, you are the person, you are the first person in your life. And Absolutely. like you need to invest in yourself um, first to attract the right type yes. of person yes. in your life. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And I can definitely relate with my personal experience. I would say most of the time, nearly 100% of the time when I wasn't super grounded, when I wasn't like carefully 
uh, listening to myself, aware of myself, paying attention to myself, and dating myself at the time. And most likely, close to 100% of the time, the people I, like you mentioned, like romantic partner that I meet in my life are, like, I thought uh, it would work out super well. I thought, you know, like, um, something, something. But at the end, it turned out to be different because I was more so, like, projecting what I was lacking within myself onto this person. So almost like I was telling myself the story to fall in love with this person. That at the end of the day, it wasn't, obviously we all learned a lot and it's a beautiful time, but at the end of the day, it wasn't um, that super sustainable. And I think that's something super important to keep in mind for, especially for all the younger generations and and everybody who, who are listening. So yes, um, Okay, this this part. Yeah, tell us about um, the fire walk. By the way, for those who you don't know, the fire walk is at the end of the day, you know, this Unleashed Power Within event Tony Robbins did. I think the day one or the day two uh, in the evening and after you master or learn, practice so much about physiology and you do the thing, which I believe they still do at some places, maybe in South America, part of Asia, that you, a ceremony that you literally take off your shoes and you walk on like fire or like burning coal. So tell us about that. Like, how did you feel before and after, you know, and and, and that? Yeah, <laughs> Please. I think, you know, when people were telling me about that event um, and I've never been at the time, I was like, yeah, no way that you walk on like real fire. Maybe they yes. put something like to to make you think and that you're walking on fire but it's not um but actually i think it really taught me and i did upw like a few times now um right. unfortunately the last time on, on virtual um I heard, not yeah. unfortunately like it's still nice but i i you don't get like the whole it's, ex- it's a totally different energy when you're there in a room absolutely yeah exactly absolutely. um yeah. and i think you know it really taught me the power of your mind and like everything is about your mindset and what you believe you can do um, and confidence like mindset and confidence it's like 80 percent um it's like yeah the 80 20 that tony talks about all the time yes so you can have like all the knowledge in the world all the skills but if your mindset is is not in a good place if your confidence is not in a good place it's not not gonna serve you um and it's really yeah at the end of that day one uh, we really walked on fire um, yes. and it, it didn't hurt. And it's, it's yes. all about conditioning your mind that you can do it. And when the mind is conditioned, like it gets into your body um, and, and you can do anything. And yeah. it's, it's amazing. And I think, you know, as an event is um, UPW, it's more affordable than other events. I would like really. Like Date with Destiny or was, yeah. as, it was. Ten, probably 10 times on the prize or, or five times at least yeah, yeah. so i think yeah. you know it's something that almost anyone can can do yeah. um and yeah, yeah i highly recommend it yeah yeah exactly and and they have discounts sometimes uh, as well and and also so yeah. is also is you cannot measure the value uh purely just from the price because you don't know what kind of people or friends, or even who knows, like partner that you might meet there because it's a hub of like-minded people. And uh, I still remember exactly the moment when I was doing it. They asked you to take care of your shoes, and um, and then they were doing something. I think like some do ask you to do some breathing with them, and like one, two, three, and then they just like scream at you, <laughs> was like go. I was like, oh, ah, time to go, and then they did it, and and I, it was so fast, and uh, it was my brain still adjusting that. I can't believe I did this. Um, it was um, it yeah. was so fun, uh, and I still have those photos because I oh, at that time I was taking photos. I brought the camera into the into the event. It was super yeah. super cool. Oh, I yes. don't have any photos, unfortunately. I need oh. to go again. Yeah, absolutely. Have you been to uh, Date with Destiny or other events? Oh, yes. wow. Yes. Did you go to the one in Florida or or? I went to the one in Florida in two thousand eighteen. Wow. Wow. How, how is that, right? Would you say that's like a next level of uh, emergent compared to UPW? Yeah, it's like super next level. It's, uh, yes. it's very intense. Um, yes. I don't Absolutely. know how he's able to like be on stage for yeah. such long hours. Like we would finish at four in the morning. Yeah, sometimes exactly. and then... He doesn't even go to the bathroom like at UPW. It's like... <laughs> yeah. So um, <laughs> yeah, it's next level. And I think it's right. six days um yes. full immersion um mm-hmm. and you really work every day you work on different topics um so one day is on relationships for example um Absolutely. your beliefs and 
it's it's really when you want to rewire yourself as a human being and like rework yes. on your goals and priorities. Um, yes. yeah, it was an amazing experience. Yes. I think it's important, extremely important for everybody, you know, whether they go to these kind of events or not, where they can try to do that on their own, which is like really take a step back and truly honestly evaluate how they are, uh, they're like, um, how far they're getting into their progress when it comes to their goals. Mm -hmm. And, um, and this question is something you mentioned earlier that I was thinking, uh, Sanya, do you have like a routine uh, or something that you do every day to help you get into the state of, you know, being confident that being uh, in a flow state that are very uh, productive? Um, because I think many people look up to you and they will want to know. Um, yeah, I, yes. I do have a routine. Um, I'm trying to do it every day, but sometimes yes. I'm not really successful. So let's say 80, 20 again. Okay. I think, Good. you know, that's fine. Cause you need to give yourself, yes. um, a break Absolutely. as well. Yeah. And it's like going to the gym. You can't be going to the gym every day. Like your muscle are going to be so tired anyway. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Days. No, but yes. something that I do every day because it really, it doesn't take a lot of time. So if I'm not able to do it in the morning, I will do it like in the afternoon. It's really, um, find these like small moments of of gratefulness and because i think right. you know being in a grateful state is the baseline for everything yes. Reconnecting with my breath thinking about you know what are the things that i'm grateful for uh, might be journaling about them as well um, and that immediately gets me in a in a beautiful state so i think right. when you're grateful you cannot be angry um you yes. cannot have negative emotions when you're exactly. coming from a place of being grateful um, and then I try to, um, do some form of exercise, like four times per week, maybe more, uh, when I have more time. And for me, it, you know, really helps me, you know, shake my body, get that energy. I put some music, um, whenever I can, I will go and like take a class somewhere. So during COVID, unfortunately that, that was not possible. And I think, for me as well, um, I lived in Portugal last year and then I lived a bit in the mountains with my husband during COVID. Um, it was beautiful to be surrounded by nature. Um, wow. So I think, wow. you know, what I realized is probably I don't see myself living in a big city. Um, and now oh, I'm thinking wow. about, okay, what, what, what is my next step? Where do I want to live so that when I wake up, I can, you know, walk with my feet on the grass and like I can right. touch a tree I can see nature um because that's really important and yes. um I function better when I'm just in nature uh and yes. now it really has an effect on me uh like when yeah. I come to Milan I'm like oh wow it's it's too much yeah. like people right. shouting on the street like <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I need to meditate even more um to reconnect with myself Fair enough, fair enough. And especially with the Mediterranean people, they have really have that fire, right? Yeah. Like the Italian, the Spanish, like talking with their hands, the, you know, the, the weather, the, everything, the, the Bino and, um, yes. Do we speak Italian by the way? Just curious. Yeah. Curious yeah. Well. I grew up, I grew up in Italy. I was, um, okay. I was born in Croatia, but uh, I, that's I right. Yeah. Italy. Yeah, yeah. Do you speak Spanish? Because they're like somewhat similar. Um, not really. Bit. I mean, I can understand it probably. Okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Similar. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Beautiful. Um, this question. So we're about to wrap it up because um um appreciate your time and don't want to take too much of your time. So, um, you mentioned that yesterday you watched the um, conference with your whole team, the B Word conference. Yeah. Um, and. Elon Musk was on it. Jack Dorsey was on it. Do you have like a comment on it? If there anything that especially stand out uh, to you during that um, conference? Yeah, I was watching it with my team uh, actually because I was in Portugal. We didn't get yes. to watch the whole conference, but we right. watched um, Katie, Jack, and and Elon because everyone was yeah. waiting. Yes. Um, what are they gonna say? And I think you know just yes. the fact that we have three such influential people engaged in blockchain and yeah. crypto that's already like a huge recognition absolutely you and the sector and um yeah i think you know one thing that we were commenting is um what is going to happen like with with twitter because he was saying you know how can we use crypto for um payments and like for for advertising uh so what is going to happen with with twitter and and with social media in general like once right. the option of crypto kicks in yes. um and also yeah elon was saying um that 
not only himself and Tesla, but also SpaceX, like they all own yeah. um, Bitcoin and he's mostly yeah. posed in Bitcoin. Um, yeah. So that was also interesting to see and, and to understand that actually um, it's his best intention to right. fuel all these technologies just about um, waiting to have, um, you know, more green energy for, for him being used to you know, fuel it further. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, it's, it was absolutely beautiful to see three yes. such influential people engaged and interested and really wanting to put their expertise to, to fuel the industry. And it, yeah, it was beautiful. Yes, absolutely. Indeed. Um, and also like, um, I saw some YouTube, um, highlights of, like, of Elon Musk talk and also share with some of my other friends as well so that they can, um, be more interested and learn more about um, the whole technology. So fun question. Why do you think Elon Musk was and is and always like holding Dogecoin or talking about it? <laughs> um, yeah, just, think, you know, curious. I think honestly, like I might be wrong, but there's like an element of humor in him in just wanting yeah. to have fun as well. Cause there was a comment that he said, when they yeah. ask him about, you know, what what is going to be the dominance in crypto, like the dominant crypto. And he yeah. said, you know, how fun would it be if it was Dogecoin, you know, yes. with without yes. fundamentals that Ethereum and Bitcoin has. Um, so I think for him, like probably it started as an element of fun. Um, yes. And, you know, now it became something more. But yeah, that comment like sticked with me. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. That's so funny. And <laughs> yeah. And also a lot of people, those, these, what I'm about to say, are not necessarily all the opinion I agree with, but I think they're interesting because a lot of people in the crypto, you know, like super anarchy people, they, they think that, um, Elon, sometimes he just like pump and dump the price, you know, and because it is indeed that he also is indeed super crazy to think about. He does have this power every, you know, he will be make a tweet and it will totally shift the price, even Bitcoin itself. And, um, I think that is something that everybody should be considering. Like, of course, you know, like you mentioned, these are the big people that they are talking about technology, which bring more intention, more uh, attention to it, more mass adoption. But also at the same time, we should be aware of even those people we look up to, even those people are very smart at the same time that, but their opinion should not necessarily impact our decision all the time, right? Because at the time that, you know, say Elon tweeted something about uh, Bitcoin two, three weeks ago, or maybe a month ago, and then talking about like Tesla not accepting Bitcoin at the moment, and then the price started, uh, uh, went down for quite a bit. So I think that is something everybody should be mindful about. Um, yeah. Yes, because like, it is the people that give him too much power, you know, and, uh, and yeah. Mm, Anyway, I know you got to run. So I'm going to wrap it up with this one last question, Sanya. Um, what one advice that you will give it to the younger version of yourself? Oh, wow. Um, I think I wish I knew sooner um, the importance of just investing because I grew mm -hmm. up with the mindset of, oh, you, you need to save money like and put it in a bank. Um but that, that's not actually smart. Um, what is smart right. is, yes, of course, you know, saving money is important, but can you put, you know, your money to work for you? And, you know, the younger you are, the better. And you can start really small. You can start by putting like 100 euros per month and that, you know, the, right. with the power of compounding that yes. that's really grow in the future um, and, and really diversifying as well. Um, yes. It's not everything in, in crypto. Um, so, so it's really about how can you build a diversified portfolio as well to create that confidence and security for the future um, so that at a certain point you can say, you know, I don't need to work anymore and I'm going to work for what makes me passionate because I have, you know, money working for me uh, while I sleep. And I think, you know, I wish um, I knew that when I was much younger. Yes, absolutely. Uh, that's beautiful. And all the peers out there, all the younger generation, this is the future hour. And it is extremely important to invest your time and your money in yourself and uh, for you so that you and your loved ones together, we can build a brighter future. So this is the future hour. And uh, with Sanya, the CEO of Utrust, thank you so much. And we're signing off. Thank you. <laughs> thank okay. you so much. Thank you so much.